Hey guys, Richard Holden here and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a Forgotten Warrior, the 4.6 liter 3 valve motor. That's right, I've got a lot of videos up on 2 valves and 4 valves, even 5 fours and coyotes, but nothing on the 3 valve. So hey, 3 valve guys, this is for you. In this video, part one of our 4.6 liter 3 valve mods, that's right, there is going to be a part two where you get to see a custom manifold that I did. We're going to compare it NA and supercharged. Very good stuff coming up in part two. For this video, we're going to take a look at some modifications we made to a otherwise stock 4.6 liter 3 valve motor. We ran headers on it, we adjusted the cam timing mechanically, we added nitrous to it, and we added a blower at different boost levels. Why are we still talking? Let's get going. So here's a test for all the 4.6 liter 3 valve guys, all the forgotten guys. Obviously, we've done lots of testing, and I have videos up on the 2 valve stuff, the 4 valve stuff, and then some of the stuff even on the Coyote and 5.4 stuff. But nothing on the 3 valve stuff other than a single turbo example video that I have up. But this was early on. We ran a 4.6 3 valve. The one problem with this is we could not, because we were running it on the engine dyno and we were running it with a fast XFI management system, we could not run the variable cam timing. So we ran a, we ran the cam timing basically just fixed the way that it was, basically what their default setting was. So this is what happened when we ran this. Now we, we did a num, a lot of testing with this. We ran, I tested the, the factory air intake setups and all this. We tested the factory ex exhaust manifolds and, this configuration to get things started with was actually run with a radius air intake in front of the throttle body, in front of the factory throttle body and the factory intake. This thing had the stock intake, stock throttle body, stock heads, cam, without the variable cam, obviously um, stock short block and all of that. When we ran it with a set of JBA long tube headers uh, feeding with collector extensions back behind it. The thing was tuned with the XFI management system. This was run at about 12.8 to 1, and we ended up running, I think that this thing ran best at about 30 degrees of timing. Uh, Tom, the good guy that used to work at West Tech, did all the tuning on this for me. This was way back. So what we did was run the thing NA to start out with, and then we would eventually run nitrous on it and also run the supercharger. So here is what the thing did with the long tube headers with no variable cam timing, just a fixed cam timing, and with an optimized tune. This thing made 361 horsepower and 381 foot-pounds of torque. And because we couldn't run this thing with the variable cam timing, we did the next best thing. We did a, we adjusted the camshafts actually mechanically. So what we did was we retarded the camshaft by one tooth. And I'll go ahead and show you a, a, a photo up here of us just basically moving the cam sprocket one degree, and or one tooth, I should say, which, which the effectively was about eight or nine degrees is what it turned out to be when we did the math on it. But here's what happened when we changed our cam timing by one tooth and retarding the camshaft had a kind of predictable result or, or this is what we normally see. In this case we ran uh, retarding the camshaft improved power out at the top and you can see from about 5200 or so it made more peak power, it made 369 horsepower, but below that point, it also, we traded power because retarding the camshaft, lost power down low, especially way down at 3000 RPM. It lost quite a bit of torque. We went from 334 foot-pounds down to 307 foot-pounds. So as, as we would expect, retarding the camshaft improved power at the top by a little bit, but traded a lot more down low. And this is kind of the benefit, this explains the benefit of variable cam timing, that if we have the cam timing advanced in our position that we had when the thing was fixed, we would have the power down low, and then we could pick up power up top by retarding it, which is exactly what they did. Now let's take a look at see some of the modifications we made to this motor, including nitrous and then eventually the supercharger. The first of our more serious upgrades to the 4.6 liter 3 valve, and actually when we did the cam adjustment, we did that at the, at the end after we had done all the other modifications. So this is our naturally aspirated version with the cam timing in the fixed position before we adjusted it. But our first change was to add nitrous, and we did this with a Zex wet EFI kit, uh, and, and all we did was position the 
nozzle in front of the throttle body so that when we went to wide open throttle, we could activate the nitro setup and, and run different uh, jet sizes and stuff. And what we did, we set it up with jetting to provide uh, a jump in power of about 75 horsepower. And nitrous is very nice because it's really easy to work with. It's easy to install, relatively speaking. It's inexpensive for the amount of power that you can get. And it's something that you could put on in like, you know, <laughs> we've installed kits and, in, you know, even in a vehicle, you know, in a few hours. And then you can go out and, and uh, you know, have a dramatic change in the power output of your motor. So we added the Zex Wet EFI kit to our 4.6 liter three valve and here are the power gains now i'm going to show you what happened when we did a little bit of tuning on this so we added the zex we retarded the timing by three degrees um, from 30 degrees down to 27 degrees and then what we did was uh, activated the the kit but it was very very rich so what we did was we did some tuning on it and we took fuel away by changing the fuel jet in this case. Here's what happened when we did a little bit of tuning on our Zex kit. And you can see much smoother curve, um, you know, much better gains. We ended up increasing the peak power up to 427 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 467 foot-pounds torque. We activated this thing at about 3,500 RPM and kept it engaged till out near 6,000. You could see the thing fall off after we let off the button. That's what's happening. It's just going back down to its naturally aspirated power output. And as you can see here, you can see the gain here. We've just basically added, you know, 75 horsepower or so kind of throughout the a whole RPM range after, after the activation. And that's the nice thing about nitrous is the cool thing is that when you add 75 horsepower, the earlier that you add the nitrous, the earlier that you engage it, the more torque you add. You can see we've gone from a peak of 380 to 468 foot-pounds. So we added basically a lot more torque than we have horsepower. And that's just a function of how early you activate this. Some guys, when they're drag racing, they'll activate it right out of the hole. And then this is especially true of guys trying to spool up big turbos on small displacement motors. The earlier that you activate it, you get a big hit in torque and which in, in turn can spool the turbo up on our 463 valve. The combination worked very well. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we added boost. After running the nitrous on our 4.6 liter three valve, it was time to add boost. And in this case, we added a vortex centrifugal supercharger. And we first ran it with the pulley supplied with the kit, which is a 3.6 inch blower pulley. And then we stepped down in pulley size or up in boost to a 3.33 inch blower pulley. The supercharger kit was designed to run non-intercooled on the 4.6 liter three valve. So we stepped up in octane a little bit. We combined 91 and mixed that with 100 octane race gas. When we tuned this thing, we ran it at about uh, 24 degrees total timing at the power peak and had slightly less timing than that uh, through the curve. We also ran this thing at about 11.8 or 11.9 on the air fuel to keep it nice and safe. This combination worked very well. Now, previously we had tried also to run a Paxton supercharger on there. And unfortunately we had to replace it with a Vortec because I managed to damage the Paxton. What we had, done, what we did was we actually um, sucked a rag into the backside of the supercharger and it damaged the blower, locked the blower up and, and damaged the impeller. So we had to replace that with a Vortec. So thank you guys way back when for the guys at Paxton and Vortec for coming to the rescue to provide a second blower so that we could get this testing done. So this was our naturally aspirated version. Again, remember we're running without the variable cam timing. So 361 horsepower and 381 foot-pounds run NA. Here's what happened when we finally got the, the Vortex supercharger installed, up and running and tuned. In typical blower fashion, we had a rising boost curve starting out at two or three pounds down low, and then rising in this case with the 3.6 inch pulley to a peak of 11.3 pounds out here at 6200 RPM. So you can see good power gains. Um, the power output was up over 550 horsepower, 558 horsepower peak torque checked in at 512 foot pounds of torque. 
So we did, seeing this, we thought, okay, that's good. Those are good power gains. But what we want, obviously, is a little bit more power. <laughs> so what we did was install, we replaced the 3.6 inch blower pulley with the smaller 3.33 inch blower pulley. And we also had to install a slightly shorter belt, which involved, because this was a reverse rotation blower, it involved taking the blower off to do the belt change, but it wasn't a big deal. After running the, after installing the 3.33 inch blower pulley, the peak boost rose to 13.7 pounds, where this combination made over 600 horsepower, 612 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 545 foot pounds. As you can see, it's still climbing as we go out because of the rising boost curve offered by this centrifugal blower. We ran this thing with the bigger or with a smaller blower pulley and more boost out to 6300. So as you can see, the three valve can definitely be made to make good power. It has good it has a good good cylinder heads, it has a good intake manifold design. If we were to run the variable cam timing, that would be another great addition because it would help it make more average power. The three valve can be made to, to produce, you know, really good power because it has a lot of stuff going for it. Uh, check out part two where I'm going to be showing you a custom intake manifold that I made for this and show you the differences in power both naturally aspirated and when we ran this supercharged run. Good stuff. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure on our 4.6 liter three valve motor, the other guy's forgotten warrior modular Ford? Well, we learned the following thing. It responded to modifications just like every other motor. It definitely liked Niger's and it definitely liked Boost. Not a big surprise. The cool thing was this motor was already pretty good to begin with. I mean, this thing made 350 horsepower naturally aspirated, which is a lot more than the two valve stuff. And I think on par with what the four valve stuff, it's no coyote, but it worked pretty well for the three valve. I like putting the Niger's on it. It's easy to install. It makes a big power jump. But what I really like was when we added the Vortec and then added even more boost from the pulley change. Make sure to check out part two, where I do a custom intake manifold. We compare it naturally aspirated and supercharged. Good stuff. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.